topic valuation report and documentation you know when we do the valuation for any asset ultimately what are we required to do we are required to summarize our valuation exercise or the valuation that we have done in the form of report and that report has to be absolutely comprehensive it has to contain all the requirements for it to serve the purpose for which it has been prepared that means it should very clearly bring out uh, every aspect of the valuation that we have done and in that context another th another thing that becomes equally important and that is documentation that is documentation and why documentation <clears throat> what is the importance of the importance of documentation uh, that is what we will understand i am sure by experience we know that it is very essential very critical for every one of us that we keep the documentation of the entire process of valuation and why is that it is for many reasons one of the reason for which we need to ensure that we keep documentation of the valuation exercise in a very systematic manner and that is because tomorrow our report may be subjected to questioning by different government uh, agencies and uh, <clears throat> when our report is questioned or subjected to questions or queries by the government agencies in that situation if we have followed the documentation properly we would be able to substantiate everything in a very systematic manner with the support of uh, a black and white document uh, that will uh, help us in ensuring that uh, in future we do not run any in any difficulty uh, in respect of the valuation that we have done so uh, let's move forward in on this topic of uh, value of doc uh, on this topic of uh, uh, valuation report and the documentation so value of documentation when any question arises about the valuation exercise or the valuation is challenged on any ground documentation completed during the process of valuation will be of great help for the valuation professional as i mentioned a little while ago what is the purpose of documentation the purpose of documentation it helps in understanding the exact scope of the work uh, obviously the documentation process will start uh, from the first initial document or initial request or initial query enquiry that we will receive from a client asking for the valuation and it starts from there and obviously we will ask the client to very clearly list in his en enquiry as to what is that he is looking for what is that he is wanting to be valued what it is that he is wanting exactly as the as far as the valuation valuation is concerned what is the purpose for which he is doing the valuation what is the timeline that he has for it so it would start from there and uh, that is the uh, value of documentation so that means what that means uh, the with the, right from the very beginning when everything is documented tomorrow uh, the client cannot turn back and say no no maine ye nahi kaha tha maine ye kaha tha because everything is documented and you can show look this is what you have given it to me in writing and i have done my valuation accordingly in case if you want me to do some other thing i have no problem but then is going to be different assignment altogether that is possible only when there is a proper documentation and that is the value of documentation purpose of documentation as i mentioned uh, number 1 it helps in understanding the exact scope of the work and it brings out clarity not only for we as the valuation professional but it also brings out clarity as far as the client is concerned number 2 it helps in supporting the level of due diligence used by the valuer so depending on what is the requirement of the client as far as the valuation is concerned it would uh, give us an idea as to what kind of due diligence is required to be done at our end as a valuation professional and that is what we would do and this is how the documentation uh, helps in that and number 3 uh, the documentation helps uh, building evidence in support of the work done by the valuer in case of litigation if any so not only litigation but also in in case of any questioning or any 
enquiry or any investigation from any of the government agencies that can happen tomorrow, uh, your documentation is going to be your best defense in case if any of such kind of event hap happens. And that is the reason we should be very, very particular about the documentation. Many a times it is possible that the client might say, Aray, baad mein kar lenge, kya jaldi hai, pehle valuation kar lo. Uh, it is in our own interest better for us to ensure that the documentation is done properly. There are no, no shortcuts are taken because uh, by experience we know that the shortcuts leads to the long cuts. So, and that is what we can avoid with the proper documentation. Now, uh, what are the uh, documents uh, involved in case of uh, documentation documents in case of the evaluation process? So number one is the agreement for engagement. So when I say num uh, agreement for ag engagement, it does not mean only the engagement letter. It also means every communication, every email, every letter that you would have exchanged with your client before getting the engagement letter. So all those uh, co correspondence are also a part of your uh, documentation. And why is that so? Because many times uh, the detailing will be in the earlier communication and that detailing may not get captured. Of course, it should be captured in the engagement letter, but sometimes it can happen that it may not be. Uh, in that case, if earlier, uh, earlier mails or letters are not uh, uh, documented properly, then uh, there, may be, uh, there may be some issues uh, in that respect. Number two, uh, data obtained during the process of valuation. So when we are looking uh, in terms of uh, securities and financial assets, so uh, when we are doing the valuation, let's say a company which is going to issue uh, 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 shares uh, by, uh, by private placement, so, uh, and we want to do the evaluation of this company uh, so as to advise the company as to at what price the company can issue or the company can make the private uh, uh, placement. So, uh, now when we have to do the evaluation, so a lot of uh, data will be required. What that company is, what is the company's product, what, what is the industry that this, this company belongs to and uh, what are the past financials of this company what are the future projected cash flows of this company uh, uh, what is the run what is the uh, uh, the whole background of the company and uh, we will also need to uh, determine the cost of capital which is more appropriate uh, for this company how have we arrived at the cost of capital for finding out the present value or for finding out the intrinsic value of this company what is the uh, the the, the uh, risk-free rate of interest that we have taken, what is the beta that we have taken, what is the market return that we have taken and, and all that will need to be documented. So maybe uh, you will get this information from the net. So uh, it, it, it is possible you get the information from the net, you in, in, insert it into your Excel sheet and forget about it. No. If you are taking a risk-free rate of interest uh, from the internet, and you take that figure, of course, but at the same to, same time, what you should do? Download that particular particular page. Take a print, uh, if possible, or else save that page systematically uh, in a folder uh, relating to uh, this particular client. And that is what we would we would do. And there may be so many uh, sources of information and data collection uh, that you will resort uh, for. Uh, completing the valuation exercise for completing the valuation assignment. Every and any information that you collect, any data that you collect from anywhere, make sure that it is part of your file, maybe the physical file or maybe the digital file, but it has to be there and it has to be there in a way so that it is easily accessible. Tomorrow, in case if you have to refer this document, you should be able to retrieve it without any difficulty. Uh, number three, valuation working and assumptions. So, uh, uh, assumptions would mean that uh, let's say you are doing the valuation based on the discounted cash flow method. So if you are doing the valuation of a company based on the discounted cash flow method, obviously you will need the projected cash flow uh, of the company for next 10, 15, 20 years as the case may be. So uh, how this cash flow has been arrived at? Invariably, please remember, uh, making the cash flow is not the obligation of the valuation professional. Making the cash flow is the obligation, liability, responsibility, duty of the client to provide to the valuation professional the projected cash flow. 
the liability the the obligation or the duty of the evaluation professional is to ensure that the cash flows which the company has given to the evaluation professional those cash flows need to be validated based on the ground realities and the assumptions that the company has made uh, got to be checked and validated as to those assumption assumptions are not flowery or those assumptions 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 are not uh, over optimistic and that is what we'll need to do so jo bhi aap jo bhi whatever information that you have received from the client and whatever working that you have done on these these details and documents and information that is again you need to document and keep it uh, with you safely then finally your valuation report now valuation report is the final document so uh, that is the end product of the entire valuation process and that is some the the valuation report now this valuation report has to uh, has to contain uh, all the relevant information all the relevant information right from the purpose for which the valuation is to be done and also disclosure and also disclosure uh, of interest by the valuation professional because that is the uh, requirement as per the professional uh, standards uh, and the ethics that the valuation professional has to disclose very explicitly in the valuation report that he does not have any conflict of interest as far as that valuation assignment is concerned and that's your valuation report and the fifth number is the management representation so uh, quite possible uh, during the process of uh, uh, during the process of the valuation uh, we as the valuation professional uh, come across many situations where we may have certain queries and questions uh, with regard to the assumptions with regard to the information given to us by the company or by the management of the company now uh, in such cases uh, uh, even though we have certain reservations uh, the management uh, will be, will give us a contrary view supporting that contrary view uh, with documents details and facts so uh, and the management and the company has a right of course to do that in that case what we need to do we need to receive a written management representation including all such uh, points uh, so that tomorrow uh, if it is required we should be able to present it to the authorities that look this is what we had received from the management and this is an area which is not in our domain this is the area which is in the domain of the company and company has given it to us and uh, we have, we obviously had no reason uh, not to believe what the company has given so this is how, these are the five uh, things uh, that will need to be uh, document uh, five documents that will need to be uh, included as part of the valuation process uh, to be very specifically and uh, further uh, number 1 agreement for engagement and main aspects ideally covered so pehla jo document hai wo hai agreement for engagement and what it should include specifically to jo engagement letter jo aap ya to client ko dete hain ya client aapko deta hai summarizing the entire valuation assignment to usme kuch 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 jo information hai jo aani chahiye wo engagement uh, letter mein wo hai number 1 identity of the engager that means the company which is appointing uh you as the evaluation professional so uh, in practice i have seen that the engagement letters uh, uh can be issued either by the evaluation professional or it can be issued by the client either way uh, this minimum information that i am discussing with you got to be there as part of the uh, engagement letter so number 1 identity of the engager number 2 scope of work uh, as we have discussed already in uh, great detail as to why it is important to incorporate scope of work very clearly very specifically very explicit, explicitly in the engagement letter so that there are no and no confusion tomorrow number 3 professional fees for the engagement uh, and and this has to be there of course uh, as part of the engagement letter and as a matter of fact i will go one step further so not only the engagement letter needs to spell out as to what is the professional fees for completing the assignment it is always better to also mention in the same engagement letter the steps or the stages in which the payment will need to be made uh, so that you create an obligation uh, on the part of the client to make the payment to you from time to time depending on the progress of the work uh, number 5 4 is confidentiality covenants 
obviously uh, this is understood and this is implied and this is also requirement of the professional standards and the ethics that we are governed by and that is to maintain the confidentiality so we as the valuation professionals are duty bound to maintain the confidentiality and so is the client uh, uh, also has to maintain the confidentiality and that confidentiality clause has to be very clearly incorporated in the engagement letter of course it will have certain riders what rider a rider that uh, as a valuation professional though we are duty bound not to make not to to divulge any confidential information to any x y z but in case if any information needs to be disclosed or divulged as uh, as as a requirement for under any of the statutory uh, provisions and then in that case the as we as a valuation professional are free uh, to make those disclosure only if it is required by any of the government agencies as per any of the government rules then we are free to make uh, to uh, to have the exception to the rule of confidentiality covenants number 5 it should uh, the engagement letter should also have a timeline very clearly specified uh, we are duty bound as valuation professional to complete the assignment as per the timelines given in the engagement letter so this creates an obligation not only on us but it also creates an obligation on the uh, the client and why is there so because the client is also in that case duty bound to ensure all the information details and documents and uh, which are required uh, for completing the assignment uh, within the given timeline he has to provide and uh, so it puts some kind of pressure on him also when you mention the timeline it also puts some pressure and i will not say pressure i will say more it uh, it gives you uh, an idea to plan the implementation of the valuation exercise uh, depending on the timelines which are mentioned in the engagement letter and number 6 uh, it will have uh, the indemnities uh, what is indemnity we all understand uh, but just for the sake of uh, uh, clarity indemnity is the client is to indemnify the valuation professional uh, in case some loss or damage or inconvenience is caused to the client to the to, to the valuation professional because of some wrong step done by the by the client then the client will have to indemnify the valuation professional and vice versa that means the loss inconvenience or cost that the valuation professional will suffer because of a wrong step or wrong thing done by the client the client will have to uh, compensate the valuation professional and vice versa so in case if there is a loss or a cost or any inconvenience caused to the client because of some wrong step by the valuation professional then the valuation professional is also duty bound to indemnify the client and this is your information number 6 now point number 2 data so what kind of data we are talking about number 1 we are talking about data which are obtained from the client so client one minute yes please ये 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 बोला ना एंगेजमेंट लेटर यस सर इसमें इसमें जब फर्स्ट पॉइंट आता है कि ऑथोरिटी हां जी अगर वो अगर क्लाइंट देता है तो ही इज ऑथराइज बट अगर हम देते हैं तो कैसे ऑथराइज होते हैं ऑथराइज नहीं सर इंडेमनिफाइड नहीं 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 ये तो लास्ट पॉइंट है इंडेमनिफाइड हां जी पहला पॉइंट सर फर्स्ट पॉइंट ओके द आइडेंटिटी ऑफ द एंगेजर शुड हैव द रिक्विजिट अथॉरिटी फॉर द एंगेजमेंट uh okay i understand your point sir so uh, remember you are the sole owner of your proprietary concern as a valuation professional and therefore when you are engaging yourself with any client you do not need any authority from anyone because you yourself is an authority but when the client is giving you an engagement letter signed by someone that someone depending on as to what is the nature of the uh, assignment uh, that someone may need to be authorized maybe by the board resolution or maybe by some committee of the board which may have been delegated the power to appoint such a valuation professional i hope that answers your uh, query sir Yes, sir. If suppose okay. uh, we have sent a mail to a client, mm -hmm. we need 
this much is the money hmm. and this is the time and this is the details documents and this is after inspection and all those things we are mentioning ha ji so if in that case they have said okay or in in against that men if he is sub- supporting me with the documents that means he is he has already accepted that thing yeah and and he is he is obliged to follow whatever we have written in that men yes very right sir in in the interest of the client uh he better uh follow uh, whatever has been uh, written in the uh, in your communication but as an abundance precaution it is always better uh instead of uh, you know going uh, based on the constructive notice it is always better to make the things explicit in writing so that there is no ambiguity sometimes it is not there okay no problem sir yeah sure sure Thank okay you. so th- there may be certain exceptions and of course we can also deal with those exceptions uh, but ultimately uh, what we need to do is we need to ensure that there are no confusions at later stage because confusions leads to unnecessary uh, you know a sourness which is avoidable right so data data which are obtained from the client and what kind of data would be obtained from the client number 1 uh it can be electronic or in paper form analysis of projections would be easier if it is in electric electric electronic form so instead of the client giving you the uh, financial projections the balance sheet profit and loss cash flow working capital calculations uh, term loan calculations interest calculation uh, and the assumptions instead of the client giving you all that uh, information in a hard copy uh, it is better if if he gives it to you in excel sheet and why is there so because uh, you will be able to straight away start working on the assignment using that excel sheet and doing your analysis working note and assumptions on the projections uh, would be required from the side of the client data should be securely preserved we have discussed it better to secure total data electronically and that is what of course is advisable certain information and explanations are given through emails the same should be preserved so it's not that uh, the client will give you information in one shot and the matter is over no the client will give you initial informations based on the requirement that you may have given it is quite possible that the client will not give you all the informations in one shot he will send you 75% of the information 25% of the information uh, he will send to you later so uh, you know when you start processing the 75% information it is quite possible that you might have some more questions more queries uh, some more information is required so uh, you will send a mail to the client now all this this exchange of the communication that is happening between you and the client will need to be preserved for future reference so that's your data obtained from clients what about the data obtained from the public domain so we are doing the valuation and uh, invariably we are doing the valuation of uh, the companies and uh, therefore uh, uh, sometimes the companies can be uh, listed sometimes companies can be unlisted sometimes companies can be simply uh, private limited company so depending on the client and is uh, the form of organization uh, the information need will undergo a change and so also the sources of availability of information will also undergo a change for a limited for a private limited company uh, you may have very limited sources of information available for a listed company you will have more uh, information uh, sources available and that is what uh, we have to keep in mind so the data the information that you can obtain from the public domain will include number one is the analysts report so you are doing valuation of company of xyz uh, some analysts some financial analysts or investment analysts operating in the uh, capital market or in the stock market or money market uh, or uh, financial markets may have done an a report an report on that company or uh, uh, on that company uh, which would also include the equity research so this report which is done by a professional investment analyst can be a good source Uh, of information for you as the valuation professional number 2 corporate announcements so the the company in case this company is listed on a stock exchange uh, for which you are doing the valuation uh, this company under the savvy regulations need to make corporate announce announcements for for everything practically that it would do 
so those corporate announcements which will be very easily accessible from the website of the company or from the website of sebi or from the website of the stock exchanges now these corporate announcements will also be very valuable information for you uh, in carrying out the valuation of this company number 3 financial information is reported by companies in media so we all know this uh, listed companies do have to publish quarterly results uh, 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 in the in the uh, media in the press uh, in, right so whatever is it is published by them uh, is also available electronically as well but that it can be again useful reliance on websites and the database today there are lot of uh, websites are available uh, lot of databases are avail available uh, from where you can get information about different companies not only you can be, remember as a valuation professional uh, we will not we will need information not only about the company we will also need information about that industry not only industry we will also need information about the economy not only the economy we will also need information about the global economy so when we are doing the valuation we will have to take all these four factors into account and uh, uh, based on your experience uh, you will need to find out as to which are the websites or the portals available from where you can obtain the relevant uh, information and in this respect website of sebi website of rbi website of uh, mca website of finance ministry uh, website of many of these uh, financial regulators in the country can be of great use uh, can be of great use number uh, number uh, five uh, is reliance in views of noted persons and authors the same should be preserved so uh, i am sure uh, when we watch cnbc or bloomberg or any of these uh, uh, tv or when we read a magazine like uh, like dalal street or when we read financial express or indian express uh, indian express or uh, financial times or dna so we would always uh, uh, get to read uh, the comments of the experts comments of the experts and that is what also we can preserve uh, with regard to the companies for which we are doing valuation so all these data should be preserved in electronic uh, form for later use reference and substantiation uh, number 3 uh, valuation working and assumptions i think we have already discussed in detail valuation working are interplay between data obtained by the valuer and techniques of valuation so that is what uh, is your valuation working and assumptions assumptions used in valuation should be documented along with working and everything should have a cross reference and what i will do uh, uh, maybe uh, today or or tomorrow uh, i will uh, share with you uh, online uh, one of my valuation report uh, practically uh, showing to you as to what all information is required to be incorporated uh, in the uh, valuation report and that will also include uh, the valuation working and the assumptions number 4 valuation report so uh, number 1 uh, what we are discussing here is the minimum that we need to incorporate in a valuation report minimum that we have to incorporate in a valuation report uh, for making your report to be comprehensive for making your report full proof uh, you can always add and include more information more relevant information so as to ensure that your value re valuation report is comprehensive so where do we start from as far as the valuation report is concerned as we were discussing little while ago number 1 what we include is the purpose of valuation number 2 description of the target being valued that is the company uh, for whom we are doing the valuation and company whose valuation we are doing number 3 valuation date so uh, the you will always the engagement letter will also incorporate as to what is the valuation date that means what is the date uh, date of valuation that means uh, what is the date uh, you are you are required to find valuation of that company that's your valuation date and please remember the valuation report date and the valuation date are completely different valuation report date is the date on which you are making your report or signing the report and valuation date is the date for which you are doing the valuation listing of key data obtained so in your valuation report you also need to list out as to in the process of doing this valuation what kind of information did you gather what kind of information did you collect so as to support and substantiate your your valuation uh, exercise uh, number 5 approach to valuation uh, and this is what is required to be explicitly mentioned in the valuation report 
and that is what approach you have adopted for doing the valuation and remember the ap approach of valuation will depend uh, based on the purpose for which the valuation is being done so uh, depending on what the purpose is you will need to list out that uh, we have used the uh, we uh, we have we have you we have used the discounted cash flow method and why we have used the discounted cash flow method and that is what we, you will need to mention say for example uh, there is a company uh, which is just new uh, it's just just a new company and it has got a history only of two or three years now if the company has got the history only of two three years then it would not be appropriate perhaps to do the valuation of such a company uh, based on the income capitalization method and that is because based on the history of last two three years you can hardly derive any significant conclusion about the likely about the income uh, th that the company would continue to earn based on the past so in such a case what you will do perhaps you will use the discounted cash flow method so you will have to also give the reasoning as to why have you used the discounted cash flow method or why have you used the market approach uh, uh, approach or why you have used the asset approach or why you have not used the asset approach or why you have not used the market approach that is what also needs to be clearly brought out in your valuation report and remember that is the right, right place and the best place to incorporate all this information because uh, once you incorporate in your valuation report then all this data all this information is captured for future reference as a matter of fact tomorrow in case if there is any questioning about your valuation then all this uh, this these details that you have incorporated uh, in your valuation report will come to your help will come to your rescue will come to your support because you have already explained in your valuation report everything ab initio and that is what is going to, uh, to to support you going forward so that is what you will do at number five uh, uh, and number six valuation conclusion so finally you will need to give the conclusion as to what is the value that you are arriving at and what is the reasoning for you to arrive at that value so sometimes you can arrive value which is just a single figure sometimes you can arrive uh, at a value which is going to be a range and whatever it may be you will have to incorporate uh, that as part of your valuation conclusion and uh, finally limitation of the exercise disclaimers uh, and I can tell you friends uh, uh, the IBBI has brought out uh, I think in the month of September 21 uh, a detailed document on use of disclaimers and limitations uh, and, th and, and, and things like that and that document is extremely comprehensive and it really uh, uh, covers everything that needs to be incorporated uh, as part of the limitations or the disclaimers uh, in your valuation report so uh, and some of the things that will uh, be part of uh, uh, this last uh, uh, information like period of applicability that means you will need to mention that this valuation is is applicable only for this purpose and only for this period so uh, that is what need to be mentioned very clearly future events and developments in the market so you will need to mention that this valuation that we have done in this report is based on the information which is available to us as in present so this valuation does not take into account the likely events or the developments that may happen in future and that is not possible also because we don't do not know what is going to happen in future so what is going to happen in future we obviously cannot incorporate in, an, in our valuation what we can do in valuation we can only incorporate the current information which is available and that is what needs to be uh, mentioned in the valuation report reliance on financial data provided by the client so you will need to give a disclaimer that uh, the financial projections uh, have been provided to us by the by the by the client and uh, we do not hold any responsibility as far as the financial projections are concerned we as a valuation professional have done the due diligence and we have validated the set of assumptions provided to us by the company and also we have validated with our own sources and informations the projections given by the company but ultimate responsibility as far as the projections are concerned is that of the company and net not of the valuation professional 
And finally, of course, uh, you will also need to give in this di disclaimer scope of the report, a scope of the report as to uh, who can use this report and for what purpose he can use this report. That also will need to be very clearly mentioned in the uh, in the valuation report. Uh, then let's uh, look at, uh, you know, uh, when we talk about the valuation report, what are the qualitative characteristics of a valuation report? The qualitative characteristics of a valuation report, number one, understandability. The report must be prepared in such a manner that anyone and everyone and more so your client or more so uh, the person with whom your client is going to share that report, he should be able to very easily understand it. Number two, relevance. So whatever is incorporated in that valuation report, everything has to be relevant. Everything has to be relevant. Nothing which is not contextual, nothing which is relevant to the, uh, the purpose for which the valuation is being done uh, should be included. Materiality, we all understand. So what is materiality? Materiality is something that will, uh, that can make the user of the report change his decision. And that is material, anything which can make the user of the report come to a different decision is materiality and that needs to be incorporated. Number four, for reliability. Obviously, uh, the valuation report is being prepared by us as a valuation professional. So since this report is being produced or prepared by a valuation professional, uh, it has to be reliable. Anyone who reads this report, he should be 100% rely on this report for the purpose of his decision making. Please remember, the client is giving us assignment, not for the sake of it, not for the heck of it. The client is giving us the assignment to do the valuation of an asset or a liability because client has to take a decision about that asset or that liability. This decision is based on the value that will be arrived at and therefore, uh, it is absolutely necessary uh, that uh, the report that we prepare is reliable. Reliable. The client should be able to rely on that report for the decision that he is taking. Remember, for you and me, it is the stake is only the professional fees. But based on the valuation report that we will prepare and give it to the client, the stakes of the clients can be huge. They can they can run into crores and maybe millions and billions. So uh, that is, uh, we have to ensure that our report is absolutely reliable. Number five, faithful representation. So whatever we incorporate in the valuation report, uh, we should be 200% sure about whatever we are writing in the valuation report. And that is your faithful representation. That means the information, whatever it may be that I'm incorporating in the valuation report, I have to be 200% sure about it, then only I must mention it. So if I have doubt about something, I should not incorporate that information in the valuation report. Number six, substance over form. So ultimately, uh, 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 the valuation report is prepared to achieve a purpose. And therefore, our focus should be on the purpose and not on the periphery. We, our focus should be on the center and not on the peri periphery. And that is what we have to remember. Number seven, neutrality. Obviously, uh, as we have discussed in the beginning, uh, we as a valuation professional have to take a neutral stand. Even if I am appointed by, a, by, by my client, it does not mean that I must get biased towards, I must get favorably, favorably biased towards my client. No, I still have to maintain that my neutrality because I'm an independent valuation professional and I'm, a, I'm since I'm an independent valuation professional, that means it is my duty. It is my obligation that I should not let my valuation influenced by the fact that my fees is coming from my client. So that is what we need to take care of. And that's at point number seven. Point number eight, prudence. Uh, we all understand. I do not have to uh, elaborate any further on it. Prudence, prudence, obviously. Uh, would mean that we have to show responsibility uh, in uh, in the preparation of a valuation report. So what is the prudence? Prudence ka matlab ye hai ki uh, agar ek kharcha mein apne uh, ap, agar ek koi kharcha mein khud nahi karun, karunga to mujhe wo kharcha mere client ko karne ke liye bhi nahi lagana chahiye. And that is what in my understanding is 
प्रूडेंस एंड वी हैव टू बी प्रूडेंट एंड दैट इज वॉट इज पॉइंट नंबर एट पॉइंट नंबर नाइन कंप्लीटनेस सो ऑब्वियसली दी वैल्यूशन रिपोर्ट अल्टीमेटली एज आई सेड लिटिल वाई लगो दी वैल्यूशन रिपोर्ट हैज टू बी कंप्लीट एंड इट हैज टू बी कॉम्प्रीहेंसिव एंड फाइनली पॉइंट नंबर फाइव एंड दैट इज मैनेजमेंट रिप्रेजेंटेशन आई हैव ऑलरेडी कवर्ड शुड बी ऑप्टेन फ्रॉम अ पर्सन हु इज ऑथराइज बाय द क्लाइंट टू गिव इन्फॉर्मेशन सो रिमेंबर मैनेजमेंट इन्फॉर्मेशन और मैनेजमेंट रिप्रेजेंटेशन दैट यू रिसीव फ्रॉम द क्लाइंट इज अ डॉक्यूमेंट विच मे बी रिक्वायर्ड बाई यू इन केस ऑफ एनी कंफ्लिक्ट और कंट्रोवर्सी और लिटिगेशन और इन्वेस्टिगेशन और इंस्पेक्शन और क्वेरी बाय एनी ऑफ द गवर्नमेंट अथॉरिटीज और अदरवाइज and therefore this management representation uh, a letter is going to be a support is going to be a defense for you and for it to be a support for you for it to be a defense for you make sure that this management representation letter is signed by an authorized person of the company and not by anyone or everyone and that is what we need to ensure as far as the management representations are concerned what is the process for valuation report preparation so uh, how to go about the preparation of uh, valuation report uh, 